Oh wow, identical twins both like the same color? Must be genetics. Never mind that one was raised in Florida and the other in Alaska. Clearly their DNA forced them to prefer blue. And when they both married women named Linda? Obviously hardwired in their genes. Not like Linda was the most popular girl's name for decades or anything. You've probably heard the debate now, nature versus nurture. So today I'm going to be responding to a video by Tails. This video claims twins separated at birth prove genes control everything. Misunderstanding science, confirmation bias, cherry picking, and just coping. The video leans heavily on stories of separated twins and triplets, like the famous Three Identical Strangers and the Jim Twins. These are incredible stories, and they absolutely show the powerful influence of genetics. No one in serious science denies that. Genes play a huge role in who we are, our predispositions, our potential, even some similarities. But here's where the argument gets dangerously oversimplified. This video claims these cases answer the debate and prove it's all genetics, and that identical brains make identical decisions. This is a huge leap, and it ignores decades of nuanced scientific research. So let's talk about the triplets, Robert, Eddie, and David. The viral feel-good story of three identical strangers. Same faces, same college, same cigarettes, same type of girls. Sounds like proof that genetics run the show, until you actually watch the full documentary. One of the triplets died by suicide. The other two suffered mental health breakdowns. So, they clearly suffered trauma. The secret study wasn't secret, it was messed up. The Neubauer study was shut down because separating babies is fucked up, not because Marxists hid results. Even Neubauer's colleague admitted they learned almost nothing useful. The truth. As the documentary Three Identical Strangers later revealed, their similarities masked deep psychological traumas. And guess what? The adoptive parents were all intentionally matched for similar parenting styles by the researchers to minimize environmental variation. This wasn't pure nature. It was manipulated nurture. The researchers, like Dr. Peter Neubauer, specifically studied how their different environments affected them. They found that the triplets developed distinct coping mechanisms and personalities influenced by their upbringing, even with their strong genetic similarities. There's also the claim that twins wore seven rings each, same handwriting, same pet names, wearing the same number of rings, or naming your dog the same thing. That's confirmation bias. You're ignoring the 99% of twins who live totally different lives and only focusing on the freak coincidences. That's not science. That's anecdotal noise. It's like saying two strangers both like pizza, so they must have the same DNA. That's the Barnum effect. Think about it. If we look at most twins, they actually have different lives. The Jim twins aren't the rule, they're the exception. Most separated twins aren't this eerily similar. The video ignores cases like Oscar Storr and Jack Ufa, identical twins raised apart. One became a Nazi, the other a Jewish shopkeeper. Their politics, opposite, their mannerisms, very different. The other claim is same IQ, same career. Yes, IQ is influenced by genes, there's no debating that. But it's not fixed. Childhood trauma, lead exposure, sleep, parenting, EMF, iodine deficiency, they can all lower it by dozens of points. Romanian orphans deprived of care saw IQ drops of 20 plus points. Not everything in the brain is hardwired at birth. It rewires constantly. Every environment shapes how neurons connect. You weren't born with a favorite color or career path. Those preferences are formed by thousand nudges, repetitions, and feedback loops. They smoke the same brand, jeans. The thing is, in the 1970s, Marlboro was the most popular cigarette. If they'd been born in 2000, they'd be vaping the same flavor. Wow, my jeans made me buy the most sold brand. I am but a slave to my DNA. The other claims were just ridiculous, clearly cherry-picking. Again, the video highlights only similarities, never differences. We're looking at the actual data. Let me explain this. Genes are obviously very important. I've never tried to deny that. They form the blueprint. But this debate is often brought by a misunderstanding of how genes actually work. Your genes are not hardwired commands. They are switches, sliders, potentials. They can be turned on or off by the world around you. Denying this is denying adaptations, and humans are very adaptable. 
For your body to adapt to something, it has to make adjustments. And these adjustments are what we see. In evolutionary biology, form follows function. That's why it doesn't just affect aesthetics. Underdevelopment can also affect your breathing. Heritability doesn't equal determinism. Heritability means genes influence traits. Determinism means genes control everything, which isn't true. They have to be influenced. A 2000 Harvard study showed children raised in enriched environments had up to 20% larger hippocampal volume. In the Dutch famine, study of children born during the famine had completely different gene expressions than their siblings, including higher risk of obesity and diabetes. That's epigenetics. If genes were fate, famine wouldn't matter. Trauma wouldn't matter. But it does, because your environment writes on top of your DNA. Now, let's talk about what my channel's all about. Looks, bone structure, testosterone. You think jawline is genetic? Yes, maybe partly. But you know what else sculpts jaws and cheekbones? Proper chewing, nasal breathing, functional habits, vitamin K2, calcium, and healthy animal fats during key developmental periods. Modern humans are devolving facially, not because of genes, but because of lifestyles. You cannot tell me a man's recessed maxilla is fate when we've seen over and over again that it's environmental. Instead of confirmation bias and cherry picking, this was actually done on multiple communities, and facial degeneration was visible starting from the first generation. Sure, you don't go from good looking to really bad looking, but over time, the degenerations become more and more visible. And the real question is, do you think you're in the first generation of degeneration? Because most people are clearly not as proven by how many people nowadays need orthodontic intervention. Modern problems, modern solutions. This was done by examining more than 1,000 human skulls of the ancients. Dr. Price did not find one significant deformity of the dental arches. You can't check over 1,000 skulls, find perfect teeth, and forward-grown faces, then come to modern men and still tell me it's all genetics. This also reminds me of the podcast, where he was writing a book about breathing, and he ended up having to look at ancient skulls and coming to the same conclusion that modern foods are making us weaker and less attractive. A wide and large mouth and these powerful jaws. If you start getting into the modern era of industrialized food, mouths start shrinking. So why do we have crooked teeth? Not from genetics, it's because our mouths have grown so small that the teeth have nowhere to go, so they grow Whoa. crooked. And what else happens when you have a mouth that's too small for its teeth? You have a smaller airway. So this is one of the reasons why so many people have snoring, sleep apnea, and other respiratory problems. If that's not enough, let's test this logic with something else. If genetics determine everything, then why do height and IQ increase across generations when food improves? Does abuse or neglect in childhood permanently rewire the brain? Why does facial structure dramatically improve with proper functional habits, sunlight, collagen, and nutrition? And let's make one thing clear. I'm not saying you'll become a PSL god, because I know there's that obsession and mindset. Oh bro, then why didn't I become a PSL god? This is about trying to fix modern degenerative issues and increasing natural testosterone levels, which also affect sexual dimorphism. If genes are everything, then why does facial structure, testosterone, strength, and mood improve when people eat organ meats, walk in sunlight, and cut seed oils and processed foods? Why do people reverse acne, lose fat, fix their posture, and transform their faces just by changing the environment? I'm not here to sell you fairy tales. I actually believe luck shapes a big part of our life, and more successful people tend to underestimate or ignore chance events by overrating their abilities. I talked about this in a video, which I'll link in the description. Some things are hardwired. It's both nature and nurture. The consensus is overwhelmingly that both nature and nurture interact in complex ways to shape who we are. You were born with a range of potential, but your environment decides how much of it you express. If you're an adult, you can't change your bone structure through diets. You can maybe fix nutrient deficiencies that affect your skin, hair, and nails, and try improving your bone density. For the younger individuals, they have a much better chance because they haven't finished growing. Puberty combines genetics and environment. It's not one or the other. That's when hormone-driven transformations occur. 
So if you go through puberty and your hormones are messed up and your T levels are low, that will affect your bone development and density, therefore affecting your final look in some more than others. Try improving what you can and make peace with what you can't. Thanks for watching. Look, you want false hope or not? Only if you don't have any real hope. Well, there is perhaps one way.